Hey guys, welcome to the good old gamer. Chris here with Joe, and we just got some news on the R9 480, 480X, uh, some possible benchmarks. I just want to go ahead and start off and say that this is unconfirmed. This is all still just speculation and rumor, but from the numbers and from the charts that we're seeing, uh, which you can see yourself down uh, in the description below, I'll have the link. Um, everything seems to line up with what we've been told so far. So, uh, for me personally, I wasn't all that surprised, Joe, but you sent me the link and, uh, you, you seem pretty excited about this. Yeah, I don't see what there isn't to be excited about. I mean, it's one thing to not be surprised, but it's in a way, you know, assuming this is real information that somebody's not just messing with us, um, I think it's... I think it's great. Uh, you know what we're looking at is you know, what we talked about before was the AMD Polaris, um, whatever it ends up being called, is going to be very competitive with uh, the 980s and even um, you know the, any of the cards, even a little up there if you put it in Crossfire. But the important thing is is that you're looking at uh, an incredibly low power draw compared to any of those cards, which I know I said last time I don't really give a shit about, and that still holds true. But for a large majority of gamers, um, that could mean something important, you know, having to spend less on a power supply, things like that. Um, plus the value, you know, it, it, assuming they're priced appropriately, you know, at around $200, these could be huge sellers for AMD. And uh, from what I'm seeing, I mean, that kind of value, hell, I mean, it looks like from what I'm seeing, you could put two 480s in Crossfire and get almost as much as a 1080 in terms of raw power and probably for a couple hundred dollars less. So ultimately, this... I mean, I agree that that's ultimately what it comes down to is where these are priced. Now, yes. I've said this before, and we were talking about this earlier. Um, I feel that the 380 should be around $150, $160, which traditionally they're usually around $175. I think AMD needs to go a little bit cheaper. And the 380X, or I mean the 480X, excuse me, uh, will need to be around $200, which it's traditionally around $225. Uh, I believe they need to go a little bit less expensive to give them that little extra distance from the uh, GTX 1070 at the 375 to $400 mark, wherever that ends up. But if they do that, I think that these are going to be great sellers for AMD. I think these are going to be fantastic cards. Uh, looking at the benchmark, the 480X is supposed to be somewhere near the uh, AMD Fury card, performance-wise, somewhere in that neighborhood. And that's significantly faster in some benchmarks than the GTX 980. So we're looking at something somewhere in between the 980 and the 980 Ti in performance. And if it's around 200 bucks, I think that's a fantastic deal. Yeah, if that's the case. But, you know, the reality is we don't know yet. And we can talk about it all we want. Speculation is what it is. But, you know, that that's, that's the tough part. You know, right now it makes sense. There's no reason... A, you know that I can think of that they should be priced any more than what we've discussed around two hundred, two hundred fifty dollars. And you're right, being compared to the the Fury, you know, and, and even being better um, in some respects, you know, I don't see how these cards could be anything but big hits. There's just, you know, we can talk about it all day, but this is extremely encouraging, and it makes me even more excited for the Vega series because if they're finally getting to be competitive with what the current cards are now and the Vega is supposed to be significantly improved over these cards. I'm excited for the Vega and, and again we're looking at value. Maybe the Vega won't be a 1080 but if I can get the power of a, a Titan or a better you know or something that's better than a Titan for $500 versus the six to $700 I would pay for a 1080 I'm probably gonna go with that. So AMD's got a huge value proposition right now if they can provide as much power as they seem to be able to be able to provide for as little actual power draw and be competitive you know like i said you could still throw two of these 480s in a crossfire solution and you you end up almost competing with a 1080 and you probably spend three hundred dollars less close to yeah so, which, which i agree that's pretty awesome you know just that alone right there However, I'm not a big fan of Crossfire or SLI. I'm a single card kind of guy. I agree. Uh, just because driver issues come up and it doesn't work in all games. 
but uh not saying that that's not a bad solution if you're running a 4k monitor or uh you know if you need high refresh rate on a uh, 1440p it's a much cheaper solution than a 1080 at 700 dollars, of course right I, I can totally agree with that yeah so i mean as far as vega goes i mean it's still five months away so i i honestly don't know what there's not enough out there right now to know what to expect from that i'd assume that it's going to be at least as strong as the uh, 1080 but i mean that's pure speculation there's nothing backing that up I, I would just assume that it would have to be at least at that level but it definitely looks like amd's going for price to performance this time around and i think with nvidia leaving such a wide gap at the 200 to 300 dollar range that typically is where most gpus are bought or actually, technically, most graphics cards are bought between the 150 and 250 dollar range, but uh, Nvidia is leaving that completely vacant for right now, and I think AMD could just swoop in and take that whole market. I think this could be great marketing strategy for AMD. Yeah, I mean, I think this is really going to be what AMD has been looking for, and I think about it in terms of. You know, what are you going to buy, right? So, sure, there's a 1080 out there. There's even a 1070. And who knows exactly how. We, you know, I really haven't seen the benchmarks on the 1070 yet. Um, so I can't speak to it. But you know, if, if it ends up being comparable to a Titan and the 1070 costs 350 to 300 to $400, sure, that's a great value. But, again, as you said, most people are buying video cards in the $100 to $200 range. And when you're looking at AMD and the value they provide, you're right, it's it's price performance. Most gamers are going to go for the AMD, and I think, if anything, they're going to build a bigger brand image through that. You know, if they get an AMD card for a relatively low price, and it, it continues to perform well, you know, and maybe they're just baby gamers who are just starting out in the world, and maybe next time they're going to spring for a better card. What are you probably going to spring for? You know, if you got such great value out of the the Polaris, maybe next time you spring for a Vega or whatever the next car down the line is going to be. I think it's going to help them create a create a better foothold in the market. And I think Nvidia is kind of giving it to them. Nvidia has had such a stranglehold on the market because of their ability to put cards out there that perform like no other. Um, but if AMD is finally catching up, I, I think. Nvidia is going to have some problems. Like I said in one of our earlier videos, if if, if the 1080 or whatever is going to have to compete with the Vega, there's no way they're going to be able to charge their current prices for that kind of power. Because it doesn't look like you're going to... Or I can't imagine you're going to... If, assuming everything's priced the way we think, and again, a complete speculation, but assuming it's priced around $200, something tells me you're not going to be paying $600 for a Vega card. You just not. Well, I and mean, I mean, we honestly don't know. Vega could be a five thousand dollar GPU. We have no idea on that one right now. Well, call it a hunch. I just can't imagine them jumping. It wouldn't make you know, any sense, correct? <laughs> so, I don't necessarily know how Nvidia is going to compete if things appear to be the way they are. Um, and I'm I'm looking forward to it because I have only had an Nvidia card over the last. Eight to ten years. I had an I had an AMD Radeon, and I don't even know how many years ago that was. I couldn't even tell you which card it was, because all I've had since was Nvidia, and it's it'd be nice to know that I have another option. I agree. That's just the way I look at it. However, I mean, I'm kind of in the same boat. I've had Nvidia primarily for the past ten years. I mean, I've had a few AMD cards here and there. Um, the last big one that I had was the, uh, the four, 4870, I think was the last AMD card that I really had. And I tried getting the R9 380 a little while ago. Remember me telling you about that? I do. You had some stuttering issues. Had some serious stuttering issues. So AMD really needs to nail their drivers on these cards, and they really need to nail the price. But as far as I can tell, if you're looking at basically, uh, a uh, Radeon Fury performance for about two hundred dollars, give or take a little bit. I think that's going to be a showstopper, especially for 1080p gamers. That seems to be really where they're going. Because if you're running 1080p or lower, you really don't need the extra performance of a 1070 or a 1080. 
assuming the the 1070 is about as fast as a Titan X. Uh, those cards are really geared for 1440p and 4K. That's really where what they're going for. So, but most of the market doesn't run 1440p or uh, 4K. Most people run right. 1080 or lower. So AMD is going for the the vast majority of people out there, and Nvidia is going for the crown. And I think AMD is really taking advantage of NVIDIA's vanity of needing to always be the performance leader. And they're going to take a large chunk of the market away from them. And I think just it's a brilliant strategy. Being a free market guy that I am, I've been in retail for a long time. I've seen marketing strategies and you can tell winners from losers. And this is definitely a good strategy. I, I agree. You know, like I said, we could talk about this forever. I mean, but right now it's hard to really continue because we don't know the pricing but it looks and i hope that it's going to walk and quack like a duck as well that's true all righty guys this is chris and joe with the good old gamer signing off have a good night